Hey everyone, it's Heather with Project Pinup, and today we are making magic wands! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to show you guys how to make these. So I actually made my first wand with a friend, and that's this blue one right here. So I based this wand on the theme under the sea. And you can see a lot of the details that are on this wand represent seaweed and the underwater ocean life, and it's just absolutely stunning. So I'm super excited to make more of these with you guys, and they're, oh my gosh, they're so much fun to make, but they are time consuming. So I actually pre-recorded all the making, and they took a while. I mean, three of them, these three of them took probably about four hours, and but that's also me filming and kind of, you know, going slowly through the process so you guys can follow along. So we first did a volcano style one, and this one is almost like this one's twin. It's evil twin, and I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> but it's more of like, you know, the light and dark theme. So, and then I have a more simpler one, and this one is more of a chameleon color. I bought this paint, and it's absolutely stunning. So this is my first project I'm using it with, and I think, honestly, this wand doesn't even need anything. The texture is perfect, and the color is perfect. I think it just looks cool just like this. So, and then I made one for my daughter. I did a gold and rose gold copper theme with gold crystals as well. So you'll see close-ups and progress uh, video while I'm actually making these ones with you guys. So make sure you have all of your supplies ready and let's get started. Today I'll be using these wooden dowels we had laying around from a previous project. Then I'll be sharpening the tips to make them look tapered like this one. To make them look tapered, take an X-Acto knife and whittle the ends. You can also use sandpaper if you don't feel comfortable using a knife or want a smoother tip. In our first method, I'm going to use a paper mache technique. So grab a clean container that you don't mind throwing away. Pour a moderate amount of glue and then mix a little bit of water. We're basically thinning out the white glue. We want the consistency to be not too runny or not too thick, more like cold syrup. To test the consistency, see if it's pouring fast off your brush. If it is, then it's too thin. Then add more glue and mix well. Next, start tearing strips of tissue paper or the newspaper in about one inch pieces. Tissue paper is much thinner than newspaper, so it applies more smoothly but it also takes a little bit longer since you do have to apply more layers to build the thickness. Once you tear all your strips, set them aside out of the way so you don't get glue on them. And then we can get started with the wand. Take one end of the strip and then dip it in the glue mixture. Start wrapping around the stick while applying small amounts of glue with your fingertips. Do not use too much glue or it will take very long to dry. This part will get messy. Oh, and don't forget to take your rings off. With each strip, keep wrapping around and build the layers. You can smooth the tissue out by pressing firmly, or you can also give it texture by being messy with it and just building those layers. You want more layers near the handle part of the wand and not so much near the tip. You can also set this aside outside to dry completely before adding more layers.
Our next method is using hot glue. This part should only be for experienced crafters as you can severely burn yourself if you're not too careful. With my ocean themed wand, I had to do this in many stages as the glue needed time to harden to build each layer. As you can see, I barely used any near the tip, but I used more glue near the handle. Also, I added thin lines along the whole wand to represent seaweed. So now let's get started at the base and work our way up. I'm beginning to add lines while turning the dowel to help it level out as the glue is very hot and will drip if I keep it still. It's very important to let this dry in between layers or it will drip off the stick. Keep turning it as it dries. Using a fan also helps the drying process in between layers. Now I'm just building the handle part up and tapering the middle as I go. You can also use the tip of the gun to help smooth out the glue. Here's what the layers look like hardened. Now keep building them up. Also, use gravity to help with the shaping of the bottom. Oh no, I'm almost out of glue. Yay, it's all dry. Next, I'm going to add my thin lines of hot glue. Since this is volcano themed, this will kind of represent the lava flow. You can also use the tip again to smooth out the glue. Now I let my lines dry and you can see the detail starting to take place. Now on to the other half. I'm so sorry, but one of my videos got cut off, so the textured wand process isn't shown. But all I did was very sloppily apply the paper mache over without smoothing and then letting it dry. So for the darker colors, you want to use black as a base coat. Lighter colors, you want to use white. 
So I'm going to paint my volcano wand and the textured wand with the black first. Make sure you get all the crevices of the paper mache or hot glue texture. This will help seal the wand. For the hot glue wand, you may have to use several coats of the base, and also don't forget to let it dry in between coats. When I paint, I usually leave a little part where I can hold my fingers and paint the other side and let that dry, and then go back and paint that other part. I use two coats of paint for the black textured wand, one layer of paint for the white wands, and four coats of paint for the black volcano wand. Don't forget to also clean your workspace in between. Once all your wands are dry, then we can start painting our colors. For the first wand, I'm going to do a gold to rose gold copper ombre. I love this paint from Martha Stewart. It's so pretty. And this distress paint from Tim Holtz is really gorgeous too. Using the lightest gold color, I am painting the tip and then slowly mixing in the rose gold as I move towards the middle part. I will start adding more and more of the rose gold and then start mixing in the copper until I get to the very bottom. I actually ended up not using the gold distress paint as it was too brassy for this color palette.
Next I'm going to use the cool color ship paint that I found at Hobby Lobby by Folk Art. It's just gorgeous. Just look at all that sparkle. I did two coats of paint with this wand as I didn't need to add anything else as this was a color shift paint. It was so easy. The texture brought out all the highlights and shadows. Next for the lava wand, I used the same method of blending the colors as I used with the gold wand starting from the tip. I applied two coats to this wand, but I didn't want to make it perfect. I wanted some block to show through to give it dimension and make it look like lava rock.
all done with this one. Now I'm going to let it dry. With this green color shift wand, I'm going to keep it as is. Sometimes simple is just better. The gold wand, I'm going to add gold crystals at the base. And the volcano wand, I'm going to add alternating crystals like the ocean wand. Okay, I have my glue set out, a wax pencil, a small pin, and some crystals ready. Let's get decorating. Now with my pin, I'm picking up small amounts of glue and dotting the wand. Next, I will take my wax pencil and pick up each crystal and place it on the glue. I'm going to start with black first. As I get toward each color blend section, I start adding in different matching colors to that section and alternating the colors from the previous section. Now I'm going to place all the sides. You may have to wait for it to dry to go to the other side so you don't shift them accidentally with your hand. And here it is. I just love how this wand came out. So pretty. Okay, on to the next one. I'm going to use gold crystals for this one. I'm forming a line with my glue as I want the crystals to be in a tight formation.
I also added a little crystal on the tip. Ah, oh, this one is so bougie. I love it. I think my daughter will love it too. After everything is painted, you want to seal your wand to protect your work. This is the most important step. Please, please do not skip over this step. You can use any type of clear sealer such as Mod Podge, clear spray paint, or even this gloss glaze I'm using from DecoArt. Make sure to spray one side at a time and let it dry before turning it over to spray the other side. You don't want your paint or wand sticking to anything. Yay, we're done! Oh man, I can't believe how these came out. The detail is just absolutely beautiful and I had so much fun making these. All right, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had a blast making these. And send me pictures of your finished wands. I would love to see what you guys came up with. Also, thanks for just joining in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I really love crafting with everybody and I know this is a huge boredom buster. So I know a lot of you are stuck at home and don't know what to do. And the cool thing is, is a lot of these projects that I'm posting, you can use stuff around the house um, or make your own, you know, doughs or paints or, you know, clays, things like that. Like there's so much stuff you can do with a lot of at home materials. And I want to post as many classes as I can using these found and recycled materials. So uh, thanks for joining in. I'll see you guys later. Bye.